All right, Alexander, we uh, have video, pictures and video of uh, Kim, the great leader, Kim Jong-un. And he made an appearance at a fertilizer plant opening. He cut the red ribbon. He talked to some of the employees, and then he got back in his uh, SUV. And uh, I guess he went home. But uh, a, a, some quick comments that I was watching as, as I was watching this video. It's about a minute long. The first comment is that, you know, he's smiling. He looks pretty happy. I don't know. I mean, you know, he seems like he's in good spirits. So I, I doubt it was a, a heart attack uh, that put him in a vegetative state. And now he, you know, he's walking around smiling and and joking around, I guess, with, with the employees. That's the first thing. Number two is they have a video of him and they have smoke coming up. So I imagine he has a cigarette somewhere by his side. So he's he's still smoking. And the third thing I saw is... When he was in the plant talking to uh, to employees and managers, there was one guy, many people were not wearing a mask. There was one guy all the way in the back who was wearing a mask. Then when he was about to get into his SUV, the press and, and Kim Jong-un himself and the press that was talking to him, they weren't wearing a mask. But the four security guards around the SUVs were all wearing masks. So that's those were my quick observations. No, yeah, you're absolutely right. And I think I think we can now first of all say that Kim Jong un is alive. I mean, I, I I've seen some people suggest that these were somehow old pictures which have been brought recycled, but I don't believe that. I mean I I am sure this is Kim. You have and the video now. Exactly. You have the video now, and he's alive and he's well, and clearly he was never ill or on death's door or dead, as some people have been saying. So clearly he is alive and well. He's not in Pyongyang. That's the first thing to say. And secondly, as you rightly say, people are uh, wearing masks. So it seems to me that all the indications are that that amongst the five theories, we did that video about the five theories. Uh, uh, and I said that, you know, the, the, there was one of the two that was the most plausible that he was that he was socially distancing and that if he was going into some kind of self-isolation because cv has clearly taken root in north korea well i think you see the people with the masks and that's exactly to me what it looks like so what i suspect has happened is that uh, um he um uh, you know all these rumors were circulating we said in that video that um unless he appeared by the weekend those rumours would need to be start to be taken very seriously because the, the supreme leader or the great leader can't just disappear indefinitely. He has to reappear uh, pretty soon. Otherwise, th there's going to start developing a sense of crisis within the country with people themselves wondering what's happened to the great leader. And if you remember, we said on that video, it would have to happen before the weekend. And sure enough, it has. The timing, the timing was exactly what we said. On Friday, the film appeared. There he is with his sister in the fertilizer plant. I mean, the whole point was, again, we also said that he has to be these. He can't just be shown sitting at a desk or reading a newspaper. The great leader always has to be shown in a, in, in, in a situation that makes it look as if he is the great leader. He is in charge and in control and doing things and providing guidance. So clearly they worked hard to arrange this fast and they did. And they, they arranged this one, this particular uh, thing with him uh, being shown. But, you know, we can conclude from the people with the masks, they weren't able to conceal that entirely, that he is now in isolation. I mean, he's now self-isolating because CV, despite all the denials, is clearly now in North Korea. I'm sure that the Chinese doctors have been called in to, to help out. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you know, I think, are you, you, I'm going to make a guess. I think the whole Chinese doctors coming along because the heart surgery is, in fact, a cover story. I suspect the real, I, I think it was a deliberately promoted cover story from the Chinese in order to conceal the fact that there is uh, CV in North Korea, because the North Koreans denied there was CV. And um, I think there's been a team of doctors sent basically to make sure Kim himself is alive, but also to help Ch uh, North Korea deal with the CV crisis there, which I suspect is pretty bad. That's what I'm getting. That's that's my guess. Actually, I think I think North Korea has probably 
doesn't have the technology or the resources or the organization to well and they have the organization we'll see some organization but i doubt that they have the full ability to deal with the cv crisis and bear in mind given that they've denied it given that they say there is no cv in north korea very difficult to communicate giving advice to the north korean people about it so we will see how it all evolves over the next couple of weeks, but I suspect that is what that Chinese medical team was, was all about. I think there is a Chinese medical team. I think it was sent to the country, and I think the story that it was you know, going there for to look after you know, the great leader, Kim, Kim Jong-un, may originally have been a cover story to conceal the fact that they were going to North Korea for that purpose. So that's what it's all about. So we don't have to worry, if that's the right word, or, or, or a worry, I'm not sure whether we should be worried about Kim Jong-un. We don't have to worry about his health, or we don't have to, we, 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 if, if people have taken out champagne bottles in anticipation, I'm afraid they've got to put them back in, in the fridge. He is there still, he's still obviously very much in control, and uh, the, North, the North Korean people will have been shown these films and these pictures, they will have concluded that, so the regime is still in control. Kim is still very much in control. He's clearly alive and well, but he is socially distancing and self uh, in, in, in a degree of self-isolation and away from Pyongyang. That's the important thing. He is not in Pyongyang itself. All right. So that mystery is solved and uh, the disappearing Kim has revealed himself. And uh, from Kim Alexander, we'll shift focus and talk very briefly about Creepy Joe, a man who seems to be disappearing in his own world every day in his own mind, or what's left of his mind by the day. He had um, his first interview with Tara Reid about the uh, sexual assault uh, charges from 27 years ago with Mika Brzezinski of uh, Morning Joe. And um, okay, Mika, she wasn't, she didn't go light on Joe. She wasn't tough on Joe. I, okay, she did a, a fair job. I guess uh, Biden was absolutely awful. I mean, I once he got through the scripted part, because mm. obviously, I'm, I'm sure. No, I'm not sure. I'm a hundred percent positive. He got a lot of questions beforehand, and they scripted a lot of stuff out. But once the scripted part started to end, and he had to answer some questions that he probably wasn't prepared for, it was just an absolute train wreck. Most notably, Alexander was the question about um, Kat Tara Reed's complaint that she filed that is now sitting with the University of Delaware in their archives that have now been sealed and we can't get to them. And they're not gonna open them up until after Joe Biden retires from public life. And I think they said two years after Joe Biden retires from public life. So they're not gonna open those records up. And Biden is now insisting, insisting, forget about the University of Delaware where Reed's complaint sits, look at the National Archives. Let me open those up. So Biden's doing a, a very clever misdirection, saying, don't look over there. Look over here where I know there is no complaint. Don't look over there where there might be a complaint. We don't know. There might be. Look over here where there is no complaint. That's Biden's, uh, that's Biden's answering of that very difficult question. What did you make of that right. interview and Biden's uh, handling of it? Well, first of all, I completely agree. I mean, I thought it was an absolute train wreck interview, just as you you said. I mean, I thought that the I mean, he clearly was rehearsed and very carefully prepared before the interview. But as you correctly said, he couldn't keep it together for very long, and it just fell apart. I mean, he just he just completely disintegrated. And I think most people who watch that would agree. I mean, I think that um, it's done him it's done him further damage actually. And I think a lot of people who are watching this, people who are probably possibly looking to see whether Biden is the kind of person who is still up to handling pressure. He's not able to handle pressure. The president of the United States needs to have, be on top of his on top of things. He needs to know his own mind. He needs to be able to handle pressure and he needs to be able to answer questions clearly and coherently. And Biden didn't. And as for, you know, don't look at don't look at the University of Delaware papers, look at the Senate papers. What Joe Biden should be saying if he really believes that there was no complaint is look everywhere, by all means. 
Let's look in the Senate. Let's look in the papers of the University of Delaware. I will be phoning them and I'll say to them, look, you know, whatever agreements we had, this is now a matter of public importance. Um, we should open them up. We should go through them. We should look for Tara Reed's name. We should see if she could be identified there. Um, I will do the same with the Senate. I will do the same everywhere that there is any record of this thing, because I could say definitely, unequivocally, and without any doubt that nothing like that happened and that there was no such complaint. That's not what he did. That's Very absolutely, simple. that's not what he did. He didn't do that. He said, don't look here, go look over there. You know, uh, that's not what he should be doing. And as I said, as far as I'm concerned, the fact that he doesn't want people to look at his, his papers at the University of Delaware speaks against this. I hadn't been aware, by the way, until this interview, that Tara, Tara, Tara Reid says that she did make a complaint, a formal complaint. So that must also count in her favor because presumably she made that claim in the knowledge that there is a record or in the belief that there is a record of it somewhere. So that further lends weight to her credibility. It doesn't prove that she's telling the truth. But, you know, there's more and more corroboration, as we've discussed in previous programs. And she's acting in a way that is consistent with her story. Joe Biden is not acting in a way that is consistent with his denials. One, two, two quick comments. Tara Reid didn't keep a copy of that complaint. I don't know how, if it's, you know, usual that you keep a copy of a complaint when you file it. I, I don't know what the procedure is, but um, I don't guess if I could have kept a copy of something like that, I would have. Yeah. But she didn't. But then we're looking about 27 years in the past. So, okay. Mm. But something that life altering, I would imagine if you could keep some sort of copy for your records, you would. Yeah. You know, that's just a comment that came to my head. And uh, the the second comment that, that I have with uh, the University of Delaware archives, maybe you can answer this, is how possible would it be, Biden's a very powerful man, for you know him to contact people at the University of Delaware and scrub any record? Right, that right. right. Right, right. Can I can I first ask, answer the first question because I have actual direct experience of this. I've had to deal with many many things of that of this kind many times about whether people keep these records or not. The point, the the, the reality is, most people beyond a certain point do not hold on to these records. Uh, and some do. You do get some people who do, but most people don't. I mean, if if they have a record that uh, is a record of something that happened to them that is very, very distressing. Beyond a certain point, they throw it away so that they can put it behind them and get on with their life. Remember, it was not assumed until a few years ago that Joe Biden would become one day a candidate for president of the United States. So given that it all went horribly wrong for her before, she might not have seen the need to keep this record and having that record lying around might be distressing for her. I have seen this again and again and again. That's, that's, that happens. Now, as I said, some people keep their records. Not everybody does. In my experience, and I have actual experience of this sort of thing beyond a certain point most people don't especially if it's something as i said that is a record of something very distressing and very upsetting right. so you that, kind that, of you're saying you kind of get rid of it people kind it, of get rid of it people get rid of it psychologically and, as well exactly. and it's very frustrating for people like I once was, who have to then try and re reconstruct and find out whether one can find out about these things. Uh, but that's why public records exist, so that you can then go and find them. And, you know, most of the time you can. And here we come back to the University of Delaware. Uh, are we really, really being told that Joe Biden former senator for Delaware, former vice president of the United States, former chair of the House uh, 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 Judiciary Committee, former, uh, 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 former, well, no, what does he, uh, current nominee 
by, by the Democratic Party for President of the United States cannot simply pick up the telephone to the University of Delaware, the state where he, of course, of which he was senator for so long, and simply say to them, look, this is an absolutely urgent and essential thing. I don't need you to go and publish everything in those papers. I do need you to establish whether or not there is a record of this complaint there. That's all I'm asking you to do. Are you seriously going to tell me that he can't do that? Are you seriously going to tell me that the University of Delaware in that kind of situation would say no, given that that kind of request would be backed by the media, would be backed by the Democratic Party, would be backed by everybody? The answer is, I don't believe it. Of course he can do it. And of course it would elicit a positive reaction. It, the fact that he's not doing it speaks volumes. Yeah, but can people in the university can buy it and pick up the, the phone and say, hey, look, go through those records and any name of Tara Reid in those records, shred it. I, I oh, mean, these are, I imagine these are paper records, correct? I mean, these yes, are files. I, yes, I know. I, I, mean, I, I suspect a lot of, I mean, we were talking about the, was it the 90s, they, they would still be paper records. Yes, I mean, you could do that. But of course, then he creates another another kind of trail. I mean, that's always the danger. If you're going to go around suppressing evidence, that is that creates that creates another danger. Because can, if you, can do, you explain that, no. yeah, I'll tell you why. Because if you give an instruction to someone in the University of Delaware to go off and destroy documents with the name Sarah Reed on them, first of all, Tara Reed, Tara Reed, sorry, Tara Reed. Yeah, first of all, that is a that that is because we know we're talking about a crime that could be. That, that probably is obstruction of justice. So you're asking people to assist you in potential obstruction of justice allegations. You're asking them to engage in a conspiracy. Now, that is a very dangerous thing to do, because unless you completely trust these people and you're absolutely sure that they will, in fact, cooperate with you, the, the very great risk is that they will make records of their own. They will say no. And then that could come back and escalate it even more. I think if you want to hide something in those papers, you do what, sorry to say this, Joe Biden is actually doing. Say, well, I've got no control of those papers. Those papers are sealed for two years and there's nothing I can do about it. and Nothing the University of Delaware can do about it. That is a way of burying this without destroying the evidence and implicating more people in a conspiracy which they might not want to be involved in. So uh, that that's, whenever you create a conspiracy, that in itself creates a further trail and it creates evidence. No longer evidence of the complaint by Tara, Tara, Tara Reid, evidence of the conspiracy. And sometimes that's more easy to see than the underlying, uh, than the underlying crime. So remember what they say, it's the cover up that gets you. It's not the crime itself. And that, that's, that's, that's why I don't think he's doing it. I mean, whatever else he is, uh, Joe Biden is an experienced polit politician. I'm sure he's got advisors who would be telling him exactly that, you know, saying to him, Joe, under no circumstances go there because, you know, you don't know how many people in the University of Delaware you can trust, maybe, Maybe the senior people might be on your side, but you know there's always the danger there's a secretary there. There's always the danger that there's a lowest ranking person there who will start making records and might leak them to someone in the Republican Party, at which point you're absolute toast. You're engaging in a criminal obstruction and you could go to prison. Excellent point, Alexander. Excellent point. That reminds me of Steve Jobs would always say that, you know, when he had a new product idea coming out, he would make sure he would tell no one about it because he said the minute you tell someone about it, that's it. You never know how far, mm -hmm. you know, the word can get about that new product idea. It's the same thing. The minute you, you tell someone to destroy the records, you don't know what they could be up to. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, you, you can also, by the way, I mean, this is the other thing to bear in mind. Um, if somebody finds a thing, you know, a complaint of Tara Reid, 
well, you know, some people can be pretty unscrupulous. You know, Joe, I've got this paper here. How much, how much, how much value is there in it? I mean, you can you can make yourself you can expose yourself to blackmail in that kind of situation also, which again in a, a grizzled politico, a veteran of Washington swamp like Joe Biden knows all about blackmail. I'm sure I am sure. So you know, it's it's not what I th it's not what I think he would do. What he would do if he wanted to conceal it is do exactly what he's doing. Mm -hmm. it's exactly <laughs> exactly what he's doing. All right, excellent. All right, let's uh, wrap it up and get to our main video.